Hey guys, what's up? It's Eli, and uh, there's a video concept that I haven't done yet, and I, I, don't, I haven't even seen a lot of it out there, is about getting out of the turtle position. Um, I've made several myself about how to attack the turtle position because it's a, like a target-rich environment. You can do all kinds of clock chokes, back takes, all kinds of cool stuff from attacking the turtle, but how do you defend from the turtle position, and how do you safely exit it and uh, get yourself out with, without getting choked, without getting armbarred, whatever. So we're gonna kind of take this in kind of segments around the, the position of the body because that's usually how we look at our attacks anyway. So the first thing that we're gonna look at is if Alex, just kind of a basic idea, turtle position, generally speaking, is where I'm kind of tucked in nice and tight. I want my elbows inside my knees and I want these hands either crossing or in here like this, kind of blocking because I'm looking to shut off his ability to choke me either here or here, maybe even inside my collar. I want my elbows inside so it's closing the wedges under my arms so he, if he's trying to fish to get hooks inside or to get arms inside, it's gonna be difficult. And I like to have my butt pretty low to the ground, pretty low to my feet as much as my knees and my hips will allow so that he's not, easy, he's not able to easily turn me over or topple me over. So the first thing from here, we're looking at what if he is able to get like around my trunk. We're gonna go under the arms first. So this is the first basic one. So in this one here, um, we're gonna look at a sit out. And a sit out basically is where I'm gonna look to peek my head out to one side. I'm gonna pick a side to go for, and I'm gonna look to post on one elbow. I like personally to keep this hand kind of hidden inside of his leg, as I'm gonna use that in a minute. I'm gonna post my leg out here. I'm gonna wing this arm back because I wanna try to get above his elbow. And as I do that, I'm peeking my head up. My goal is to get the back of my head up toward his back. Right now, for the drill sake, where he's gonna uh, let go of me basically halfway through, we'll look at what happens if he doesn't and because that's that'll mess up the drill. But once I go here, I'm gonna kick this leg through like the reverse of a technical get up, and I'm gonna sit out this way, hips high, no butt to the floor, and look, my hand's still inside here. It's gonna help me pivot on that elbow and on that, that leg grip here, that, that soft leg grip, and then I'm gonna swim over this direction and turn my corner back to here this way. So now I've replaced the position and now I'm at this back kind of quadrant on Alex, right? So once again, if he's around my arms like this, right here, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna step, I'm gonna wing, I'm gonna look up and out to the corner. Uh, this hand is inside to help me pivot on my elbow and on my hand. I look up, my head goes to his back. So I'm gonna keep my hips nice and high. I wanna swim back here this way and I wanna Get that hook over here in his hip so I can turn myself around. And now I've essentially gotten to the back corner on him and he, he's in turtle position. If we find ourselves here though and Alex doesn't let go or I kind of switch things up and I, I try to keep him committed to the grip so that I don't just like peek my way out and do a sit out, but instead I use this to help reverse and turn him over. So what I'm looking to do at this point here, I'm still gonna look to sit out to the side, but I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna reach across to his cross side arm, and I'm gonna pull it deeper. Since we have the gi, I can use the sleeve, or I can just grab the wrist and pull this way. I'm also gonna take this arm and I'm gonna wing it to that side over there. Now, whenever I post my leg here this way, and I sit myself through, I can reverse and take him over this direction have to be careful that I don't over rotate so that he keeps on spinning and rotating me, but instead I land my weight off this direction here so that his grip, if he tries to bridge me across, is gonna be very difficult here because all my weight is centered up over this shoulder. At this point here, maybe I can start to try to break the grip here and go for some of my own attacks or just split that grip, come across, and then I have the top position. Now, things change a little bit possibly whenever he has one over, one under, and he's more around my neck. Which one do I decide to take then? Typically, we'll go to the neck side over here. So if he's here and he's going around the neck instead, immediately I wanna address the possible threat that he has. He not only has good control over my shoulders, but he also has a possible threat of a choke, an anaconda, a guillotine, a, a guillotine, uh, Darce choke maybe. So I wanna address that as well. So from there, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna post on that side. I'm gonna to look toward the elbow and I'm gonna peel that elbow back and down this way. Now on this one, rather than going out and back, I'm gonna go out 360 degrees. So once I go here and I peel, pick up this way, and then I wanna circle around, and now I've essentially just changed the grip on Alex to where he's in the same position. So immediately you can already kinda of see how these can work into a nice kind of flow drill, a reciprocal drill on this one particularly because I'm replacing his position with my position that's basically the same. So once I get here like this, I wanna post, I wanna hug on that elbow over here this way. I'm pulling it down, I'm looking up and I'm trying to get the back of my head here, up, and then back over 
this direction. So that whenever I, I make that replacement, now I'm, I'm safely out of danger for the choke and I've swapped positions where I'm in the dominant position now. So if Alex is more to this back corner over here, and again, we're, we're, most of these are gonna be uh, no gi or gi applicable. We will talk about some gi specifics in a minute. But if he is to this back corner, I'm gonna use a grand B instead. Because if I just try to roll out, he's gonna be able to hold on, he's gonna be able to stop my momentum. So I'm gonna use a grand B roll um, instead if he's around like this. So what that uh, basically entails is I'm gonna take the arm nearest him and I'm gonna tuck it between my two legs and I'm gonna roll from shoulder to shoulder. A typical rollout is gonna be where I roll from shoulder to opposite side hip, and then I kinda of come out that way. Uh, Granby goes across the shoulders, and I should wind up facing him at the end of it in a scramble. So whenever I go like this, I tuck, I'm gonna Granby across my neck, and then we're back in the scramble position, facing each other in a more neutral uh, situation rather than him being on my back anymore. And so I'm using uh, his, his body kind of as a, a support beam. So whenever I do my Granby, I don't have to necessarily just have balance, but I wanna be explosive with it whenever I come out. So again, if he's back here like this, then, and I decide I'm gonna hit the Granby, I don't need to waste any time doing it. I'm gonna go here, here, and then we're back in that scramble type position. If Alex is in that back kind of quadrant, like we were just talking about where I'm gonna use the Granby, but instead this time he has the other side leg up. And there's different reasons why he might wanna do this. There's different kind of opportunities he sets for different control points. So if that's the situation though, I'm gonna use that as an opportunity for me to take my leg on the inside and I'm gonna hook it behind his, if you can see that happening here. So I'm bringing my leg inside and I'm gonna hook it right here, my ankle in between or in the back of his knee like that. Now, I don't need to waste any time here because he can use this as a pinning position depending on what kind of control he wants to establish. But um, from here, if I can get that kind of pulled down, I'm gonna reach through on the other side of it here like this. Again, if we have the pants, I'll get the grip. If not, I'll just hug the knee. And I wanna use this as an opportunity to swivel around to replace my guard essentially here this way. And I can come back up to a butterfly guard position or possibly to some kind of high-low guard or some kind of K guard, whatever, as long as I'm turning and facing him now with all my weapons at my disposal now instead of him being on my back. So again, that's when this leg here is up. I'm hooking here like this behind it. I'm reaching through and I'm bringing this leg back. So now we're at very least, I'm in some kind of knee shield position like this. Now, I can be greedy with the same kind of thing or it just might be an opportunity that it presents is whenever I come through and I hook that leg like that and I get a nice tight grip on it, I'm gonna take this hand this time, I'm gonna reach through to block on that side and this arm here, I'm gonna reach back and cut under his armpit toward his lap. So that whenever I come over to my side, I collapse this leg inward, this direction, and I'm gonna pull him across. And now I'm set up in a good position to start going for knee bars here like this, or possibly with some adjustment, like sitting up and going into the saddle position to attack for a lot of different variety of foot locks and everything else. One of the big threats that you'll see a lot of times when you're in turtle position um, is especially if we have the gi on, is that Alex may start looking initially for the clock choke, which can be a really dangerous threat. It's a very good technique. I've got a whole other video series on just the clock choke itself. So if you're not using that already, you should be. But I need to know how to defend against it. And I need to know how to exit it if he starts trying to set it on. So once we get here, again, I wanna to try to block out and I'm doing the best that I can, but he's in a really strong controlling position and he gets this grip inside like this. Now, here's a, a little bit of a rule of thumb typically on chokes. With a collar choke, I don't want to necessarily turn and look at the grip. Instead, I want to turn and look at the elbow. Just kind of the opposite of if it were a rear naked choke. If it were a rear naked choke and he wasn't using the grip, I would turn and look at the connection of his hands. So anyway, when I go and I look here at his elbow, I'm going to take this outside hand and I'm going to reach and try to get a hold here of the material. So that's going to at least buy me a little bit of time so I'm not immediately getting choked. What I want to do next is I want to take this hand here from the inside and I wanna get this knee of his to the floor. It's not really that difficult. If I try to just push it straight down, yeah, that's difficult. But if I grab instead and I pull it forward, then it's easier to get it to the floor. So I'm gonna use that idea, let's go back. I'm gonna use that idea and I'm gonna hold here one and two and I'm gonna turn and look toward the thumb. I'm gonna pull his knee forward and then I'm gonna lift my butt up here this way and I'm gonna roll across. Once we get here, he still is on my neck like this but I wanna make sure that I've established my strong position here this way, and then I just can start to turn in and relieve the pressure of that choke, and he's not gonna be able to get it from the bottom with that kind of grip orientation anymore.
All right, so that's a handful of different ways that we can get out of common ways you might find yourself once you get to turtle position. Um, avoidance is usually the best thing, but there's plenty of reasons that you may want to defensively wind up in turtle position for a small period of time. And then having those exit strategies, depending on what kind of position he takes in relation to you are a good idea. So um, again, lots of other ways that we can get out of it, depending on what he's doing, how he's attacking, what kind of spaces I have, all these different factors. But these right here are a pretty good handful you can use in a variety of situations. So hopefully these help you out. Um, if you have any questions about other special conditions, then leave me a comment and I'll try to address it as best I can, uh, either in text or uh, in a future video. So uh, again, appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that kind of stuff. Help me grow my channel. I appreciate you guys.